Young Dolph started from the bottom to achieve success, but he was the kind of guy who would not forget where he came from, even if he could now buy the whole block. He did amazing things. Turkey giveaway at Thanksgiving, mentoring students, donating to his old high school. The guy was so generous. But Dolph didn't just sprinkle kindness like confetti. He stayed away from the dark side of the streets. No gangster drama for him. Now here's the question that had everyone scratching their head. If Dolph was steering clear of gangster life, why did the Trella Mafia gang decide to smoke him? Hold on to your question marks because in this video, we'll dive into the gritty details, the who did what, and the why did they even think that moments. Trilla Mafia vs. Paper Route Empire on November 17, 2021, young Dolph tragically passed away in Memphis. He was at a bakery he often visited whenever he returned to his hometown. He was shot by two attackers in a white Mercedes-Benz car. Now brace yourself. After he died, a close look revealed Dolph was hit not once, not twice, but a jaw-dropping 22 times. Bullets went through his body, including his back and forehead. A lot of people gathered at the spot where it happened for hours. The police had to keep them out while they looked into what happened. Because of this, London Lamar, a Tennessee house rep, and Councilman J.B. Smiley asked asked for a curfew to prevent any fighting or violence. Condolences and messages of respect came from other artists. Chance the Rapper posted on Twitter, God bless Dolph, real independent Memphis rapper born in Chicago, loved by millions of people, always showed love every time I seen him, this is tragic. God bless his family, man. Megan The Stallion, who has worked with the late rapper before, also tweeted, I am so sick right now, I am in disbelief, praying for his family and friends, rest in peace to my friend, a true legend, Dolph. 13 days after his death, young Dolph's funeral took place at First Baptist Church on Broad Street. The family's dark colored SUVs were trailed by Memphis police and security personnel as they headed to the burial ground opposite Hamilton High School, which is where Dolph attended school. On Wednesday, January 5th, 2022, the police announced they found out that a rapper named Justin Johnson, who also went by the stage name Straight Drop, was suspect number one in the murder case. He was 23 years old at the time. They issued a warrant for his arrest, charging him with first degree murder. Johnson had a history of illegal activities and being violent. He was also said to be connected to a criminal gang. This guy had a history, and not the good kind. It's like he wanted his own personal rap sheet. The authorities in Tennessee said they would give up to $15,000 to anyone who could help catch him. Now onto the second suspect. This is Cornelius Smith, and he was 32 years old at the time. He got arrested because he stole the car that was used in the murder. On January 11th, 2022, Smith was formally accused of first-degree murder, having weapons illegally and robbery. On that same day, the police caught Johnson in Indiana. They received more than 500 tips that helped them find him. Another person involved, Shundell Barnett, age 27, got caught too. He was in the car with Johnson when they arrested him. Barnett is the third suspect. On Wednesday, January 12, 2022, Smith and Johnson were charged with grand theft, first-degree murder, illegal weapon possession, and using a gun during a serious crime. Barnett got charged too, but for after-the-fact accessory. He was not exactly a mastermind. He was guilty by association and ended up being slapped with a You Were There sticker. An after-the-fact accessory refers to a person who becomes involved in assisting or covering up a crime after it has already taken place. This means they were not directly involved in committing the crime itself, but they helped the perpetrators in some way, such as by hiding evidence, providing a false alibi, or aiding in their escape. In the case of Shundale Barnett, while he wasn't directly involved in committing the murder, he was in the car with Justin Johnson, one of the main suspects, when he was apprehended by the police. This suggests that Barnett was assisting Johnson after the crime had occurred. The extent of Barnett's involvement and the specific actions he took as an accessory would determine the legal charges he might face. Johnson and Smith had a hard time finding a lawyer. Judge Lee Coffey gave them a choice. He said, if you have a lawyer hired, that's fine. But as I told you 10 days ago, I cannot allow you to sit in jail week after week, month after month without a lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer hired on, February 4th, I'm going to hire a private attorney to represent both of you all. On Monday, February 7th, 2021, Johnson showed up in court for a crime not related to the murder case. He was accused of not following the rules for registered sex offenders. But again, he said he couldn't pay for a lawyer. On Friday, February 11th, Smith and Johnson said they didn't commit the murder. Then, on Thursday, November 10th, 2022, the fourth suspect, Hernandez Govan, age 43, was also charged with killing young Dolph and being the mastermind of the plan to kill him. They say Govan ordered the attack on young Dolph. And the plot twist of all plot twists, Jamarcus Johnson, suspect number five, spilled the beans in June 2023. In a grand courtroom reveal, he confessed to helping out after the crime. In return, they handed him a you're off the hook 
for planning card. He's now the star witness, ready to drop truth bombs on his fellow suspects. But here's the kicker. Because the charges are very serious and the legal process is complex, the trial for those accused of killing young Dolph might not happen until 2024. As we wait for the trial and possible punishment of these individuals, let's look at the facts about young Dolph's murder and why these guys might have done it. The police have named five suspects. Hernandez Govan, Justin Johnson, Cornelia Smith, Shundale Barnett, and Jamarcus Johnson. These people have a link to rappers Yo Gotti and the collective music group CMG. Remember when the police first accused the initial suspect Johnson? They said he is also involved in organized gang crime. That's true. In fact, all five suspects are connected to the Trilla Mafia gang in Memphis, Tennessee. Now, these guys are not the typical run-of-the-mill corner hustlers. They're not like typical gangs. They operate in a bigger way. They were running a car theft operation. Basically, they'd steal cars from parking lots and then use these stolen cars to do more illegal things. That's like stealing a bike to rob a bank. Big, bold, and risky. However, this is very serious for the murder charges they are currently facing, and I will explain why. The fact that these suspects are not just involved in typical street-level gang activities, but rather are part of a comprehensive criminal operation raises the possibility of the RICO case. Their alleged connection to the gang, involvement in various illegal activities including car theft, and their potential role in. A serious crime like Young Dolph's murder could all contribute to a case under the RICO statute. In essence, RICO allows law enforcement to target not only individual criminals, but also the entire criminal organization and its members, making it a powerful tool to dismantle and prosecute complex criminal networks like the one these suspects are allegedly a part of. Now, what business does Trella Mafia have with Young Dolph? Let me start by saying Young Dolph officially founded his record label Paper Route Empire in 2010. In 2017, he pulled a family favor. He included Key Glock, a rapper who's also his cousin by marriage, into his record label. Well, if you think about it, it might not exactly be a favor because Key Glock is good. He is a very talented rapper, but his signing might have caused tension between the Trilla Mafia and the Paper Root Empire. Key Glock and some young rappers affiliated with the label seem to have serious conflicts with Trilla Mafia members. The decision to sign these rappers was a big mistake on Dolph's part. He was looking at things from the business point of view. He was not considering the beefs and the problems these guys got going on in the street. He didn't really look at it from the street perspective. Thing is, when problems arise with an artist like Key Glock, it's the responsibility of the person who signed them. So this is exactly what the Trilla Mafia did. They went for Young Dolph. It could be before or after Young Dolph's death, but these guys snatched the paper rock empire chains. However, in the hip hop world, this act symbolizes the utmost level of disrespect. Rappers from the past and today have had their chains taken against their wishes. During a show in North Carolina, NBA Youngboy had his chain removed by someone. While on stage, he stopped the show to criticize the people who took his chain. He even offered a reward of $50,000 to anyone who could find it. Hey, you see that chain? Hey, you see that chain you just took off my partner, Nick? Hey, that chain you just took off my partner, Nick, that ain't his chain. That's my chain. I ain't really tripping off this in 2018, during a concert in Angola, 50 Cent also experienced this himself. There's a video showing the exact moment when he was performing on stage. In the video, someone from the audience quickly snatches 50 Cent's necklace and disappears back into the crowd. In a concert in his hometown, Atlanta, the popular rapper Playboy Cardi also had his chain stolen. It was his first time performing in his hometown, and he's giving them a show to remember. In this video from the concert, you can see Cardi without a shirt, standing above the crowd as they excitedly sing along to his song. Song. At the beginning of the performance, he wears a modest gold chain, but by the end, it vanishes. Subsequently, during the same concert, Playboy Cardi addresses the incident of chain theft. He informs the fans that he had a chain before jumping into the crowd and was aware that someone had taken it. He informs the individual who took it that they may keep it, but he remains disgruntled with the situation. Losing a chain in your hometown is more than a fashion mistake. It's like a hit to your pride. Some rappers see their chain as a symbol of power, reputation, and style, all in one shiny piece. If it gets taken, it's like someone telling you, you're not as tough as you thought. Now let's get back to the Trilla Truly Mafia. These guys did not just take Paper Root Empire's chains, they went a step further. They actually wear it. It is like taking your rival's lunch money and enjoying their sandwich in front of them. Now that's a power move, and it is extremely disrespectful. Besides the problems between Paper Root Empire and the Trilla Mafia, Mafia, young Dolph has his own beef with a very popular person. It's not a secret, so you probably know he had a long-standing beef with a fellow Memphis rapper, Yo Gotti, the enemy of my enemy. 
You know what they say about the enemy of your enemy. This is the case with the Trilla Mafia, Yogati, and Young Dolph. Dolph had a problem with Yogati. The Trilla Mafia had a problem with Dolph and the entire Paper Root Empire. So the ties between CMG and Trilla Mafia only follow that popular adage. There are even footage and images to prove that the Trilla Mafia had ties with Yogati and the CMG. But wait, before we start talking about alliances and rivalries, let's go back and see the beef that got everything started. In the last two decades, the southern part of the United States has produced many skilled rap artists from cities like Miami, Houston, Atlanta, and New Orleans. But Memphis, Tennessee stands out as a city that greatly influenced this genre. This place wasn't just a spot on the map, it was a whole movement, alongside well-known groups like MJG, 8 Ball, 3-6 Mafia, and Project Pat. Memphis introduced Yo Gotti. He made a name for himself in the music industry with songs like Down in the DM and I Know. Not content with just dropping songs, Yo Gotti set up shop with CMG, his very own record label, nurturing fellow Memphis. Talents like Black Youngsta and Snooty Wild. Even though Yo Gotti has done well in his music career, another rapper, Young Dolph, will soon break out. Young Dolph originally came from Chicago but grew up in Memphis. He also started his own record label, Paper Root Empire. Young Dolph got noticed for his projects like High Class Street Music and working with artists like Pee Wee Longway and Gucci Mane. After releasing High Class Street Music in 2014, he went on Sway in the Morning to discuss it. During the interview, he explained why he decided not to sign a record deal with Yo Gotti. Everybody almost done came to me with different situations like man let me help you with this and do this and do that but me in my position like i got too much of my own money tied in this and too much of my own time in. like i got yeah. too much invested in mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying so he wanted to bet on himself not join someone else's team if i was him i would have came to me like this yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. but only thing was going to happen behind it was people like oh he popped off because of got it you yeah. feel what i'm saying mm -hmm. which i can't do that because i got too much of my own time and money invested mm -hmm. in. you mm -hmm. feel what i'm saying so like I said, like... And I know Gotti you respect know. that because he did the same thing. Exactly. Dolph mentioned that Yo Gotti might have been upset about his choice, which could have led to their disagreement. However, Gotti never confirmed this. The tension between Yo Gotti and Young Dolph became clear in February 2016. Dolph shared his concerns on Twitter, suggesting that Gotti didn't support his success. He hinted that Gotti had changed from wanting to sign him to now being critical of him. He tweeted, Bra went from being my hash one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater. This was about Gotti trying to sign Dolph to his label but failing. Even if he didn't slap Gotti's name on it, everyone and their grandma could tell who he was talking about. This started events that quickly made the conflict worse. In February 2016, something surprising happened. Young Dolph said his first album would be called King of Memphis. Now the problem here is Yo Gotti has always called himself the King of Memphis. Therefore, Young Dolph's album title looked like he was challenging Gotti's claim. Even though Gotti didn't talk about Dolph's choice in public, people in the Memphis hip-hop scene and the larger rap community thought Dolph was trying to provide vote Gotti on purpose. They saw it as Dolph's way of trying to take Gotti's spot as the top rapper in Memphis. In February 2016, Young Dolph appeared on Hot 97's Ebro in the morning show. He talked about the rumors of problems between him and Yo Gotti. He said Yo Gotti was one of his first supporters, and the issues were exaggerated. Young Dolph also explained that his album title, King of Memphis, wasn't meant to insult anyone. It represented his crew's unity, where everyone had success and shared similar ideas and values. He wanted to clear up any worries about a rivalry to be the top rapper in Memphis. Fast forward to March 2nd, 2017. Black Youngsta, Gotti's artist, decided to slide into the drama pool. In an Instagram video, he insulted Dolph and questioned his claim of being the king of Memphis. In the video, Youngsta directly challenged Dolph, calling him weak and asking him to speak up if he had any problems. He harshly criticized Dolph, calling him a coward and denying his title as the king of Memphis, even saying he wasn't really from the city. In addition, Youngsta ominously threatened young Dolph in the caption, promising to confront him physically. This added to the ongoing drama between Dolph and Gotti that people had been talking about. He and his crew even went to Young Dolph's hood in Memphis with guns. They didn't find Dolph, but it showed that the feud was serious. Many people thought Yo Gotti was behind Black Youngstar's actions, but he denied it in an interview. He said that Black Youngstar is responsible for his own behavior. He said, Lil homie on the team, so I'm going to always give him the proper advice that I believe I should give him from like a big brother standpoint or just being the homie standpoint. My advice, you know I don't move like that. I'm going to always tell, not only him, but any young and don't handle your business like this. On March 16th, 2016, Young Dolph talked about his feud with Black Youngsta and Gotti on Instagram. He said that Yo Gotti doesn't like important rappers from Memphis, and he even got Black Youngsta to fight his battles. Young Dolph's Instagram post made it clear that Yo Gotti was the one causing these problems. Dolph also talked about how Yo Gotti had problems with Gucci Mane before, and this might be why he was mad at him. He wasn't pulling any punches. He's got receipts. Well, pictures. He posted pictures of other Memphis rap legends who've inspired him. The hidden message 
message? Hey, yo, Gotti, these are the people I look up to, not you. That must have stung. Of course, Black Youngstar quickly joined the fray again by releasing a song called Shake Some on March 17, 2016. The purpose of the song was to show that Dolph wasn't as important in Memphis as he claimed to be and to challenge his claim of being a king in the city. Black Youngster made it very clear that he was serious and tough, using lyrics about dangerous weapons. He also repeated that Dolph's claim of being the king of Memphis was untrue because Dolph is actually from Chicago. After their argument, Black Youngstar said in one interview that despite the problems, Yo Gotti didn't have negative feelings for Young Dolph. But Dolph didn't agree with this and kept the possibility of more problems open. Young Dolph made things worse by releasing another song called Play With Yo directed at Yo Gotti. This song contains strong and rude lyrics, including insults about Gotti's child's mother. He also said Gotti became famous by criticizing the 3-6 Mafia. Dolph released Play With Yo to promote his gelato mixtape. This made the fight between him and Yogati even worse. It became clear that there was no goodwill left between them. Even though Yogati chose not to talk about his issues with Young Dolph, people were curious about how he might respond to the mean song, but they didn't have to wait long for an answer. Soon after the song was released, Yogati went on social media and showed that he wasn't bothered by Dolph's words. He talked about his connections with big names in the industry, like Jay-Z and L.A. Reid. This was the only way he acknowledged the mean song, and he didn't release a diss song in response. The situation did not remain like this for long. At some point, Yo Gotti, tired of the drama, released a song called Don't Beef With Me on February 11th, 2017. He didn't directly name Young Dolph, but the song was a warning. Young Dolph countered with a music video, mocking Yo Gotti by using a lookalike. While this was going on, Young Dolph survived a shooting in his car. The car was bulletproof, saving him. He even performed his anti-Gotti song on stage that night, showing he wasn't scared. Although he spent much of February 2017 in this feud, by March 2017, Young Dolph seemed to have moved on. He called the feud old news and focused on the future instead. Dolph didn't say much about the shooting incident that happened a few weeks earlier. People were not sure if this meant the disagreement between him and Yo Gotti was over forever, but at that moment, it seemed like they've stopped fighting. A while after Young Dolph said his problem with Yo Gotti was in the past, he got shot in Hollywood and was rushed to the hospital. This happened near Shoe Palace, close to Hollywood and Highland, but he survived. Right after people heard Young Dolph got shot, there were rumors Yo Gotti might have something to do with it. They both were staying at the same hotel, and there was a fight between their groups that led to gunfire and Dolph getting hurt. At first, the police thought Yo Gotti might be involved in the shooting, but later they said that wasn't true. A day after Young Dolph got shot, the LAPD said someone linked to Yo Gotti was charged with trying to kill Dolph. At the time, there were still two other guys the police were looking for who might be related to the shooting, but then, the main suspect was let go without any charges after being arrested for attempting to kill Young Dolph. After Dolph was eventually murdered, many people online shared clues suggesting that Yo Gotti might be involved. I'm not a detective, but it seems like online investigators were having a field day. They connected the dots quickly. There was talk about a connection between the Trula Mafia and Gotti's group. Pictures were going around showing Hernandez Govin hanging out with Big Juke, who is Gotti's sibling. I'm sure you remember Hernandez Govin as well. He's one of the five suspects being tried for Dolph's murder. Later, there was a video where Grove Hero claimed that Big Juke offered $40,000 to anyone who would kill young Dolph. Get a told you hey man look bro my just put a 40,000 on hit on you bro like you Come on, After that, news came in that the police questioned Big Juke. People were discussing it, but it's not clear what exactly occurred. Meanwhile, online, many were blaming Gotti, Juke, and CMG for Dolph's death. Blogger Vada Fly echoed many people's sentiments in a nugget that sent the internet buzzing. This tweet says, Yo Gotti's brother being seen in a picture with the dude who got arrested for putting together young Dolph's murder shows how much they hated him. It took a team to plot, plan, and strategize on how to take Flippa out. Them boys was sick. Dolph was blowing up. While Gotti's part is still not definite, the rumors and the theories surrounding his involvement in Dolph's death are not going away anytime. After young Dolph's death, things got really tense in Memphis. Unsurprisingly, someone was killed just for making a casual comment about what happened. Yes, I said unsurprisingly because there was always going to be strong and serious action against those thought to be responsible for young Dolph's death. Brewing War in Memphis do you recall when I mentioned at the start of this video that a House representative and councilman requested a curfew to stop violence or revenge? Several public officials calling for a curfew tonight, fearing acts of retaliation in certain parts of the city. It is pretty clear why they made that request. We will get back to that in a minute. Let's look at the type of life Dolph led, and it could have prompted the request for curfew. According to various sources, including what Dolph said himself, it is almost surprising that he made it to 2021. In a talk with The Guardian in 2018, he mentioned that he'd been a target since he was a teenager. 
culture. Dolph's impact left a strong mark on his two kids, a longtime girlfriend, and a city struggling to accept the loss of one of its most important rap artists. He wasn't just known for his honest lyrics about his close calls with death, but also for his humor and how he cared about his friends and fans. Young Dolph understood that people are complex and can't be judged just by their actions or public conflicts. He saw himself and others as multidimensional, and he hoped his listeners would do the same. Despite his achievements, he remained easy to approach. His music gave a real look into what it's like growing up black and poor in the South, but it was also relatable and down to earth. Dolph did more than just succeed in making music. He actively helped and guided young artists through the confusing music industry. Instead of signing with a big music company, Dolph chose to release his music on his own through his label. He proudly talked about how he became nationally famous on his own terms. He wanted other rappers to do the same. Dolph often rented a house in Los Angeles to get away from the problems in his hometown. There, he brought his artists and a team of producers together to make music. One of the projects they made was Dolph's last project called Paper Root Illuminati, which he dropped before he passed away. In one of the songs, he said, I put ice on everybody around me just to see them shining. He also let the artists he signed to his Paper Root Empire label shine on many of the 23 songs in the project. At 36 years old, young Dolph found success as an artist and managed his businesses. He was a devoted father who cared about giving back. Every year, he organized an event in Memphis where he gave turkeys and donated money to families who needed them. This showed how he overcame difficulties in his past. Dolph grew up poor and faced challenges because his parents struggled with addiction. He praised his parents and grandmother for teaching him how to handle life. He even used the term rich crack baby in his music to show strength instead of letting it become a negative stereotype about black mothers and their children dealing with substance abuse. In his 2018 song Black Queen, he shared, rich crack baby, now I'm smoking kush with my mom and daddy on a yacht. This song was a special way he showed love to his grandma and mom. He respected his grandma a lot. She helped raise him and made sure he finished school. He always said his parents' mistakes were because of societal problems, not because they were bad people. He never blamed them. When he talked to Jewel Wicker of XXL magazine, he said he knew many African-American families were going through similar hard times. He wanted to use his music to give them hope and make them feel better. Young Dolph, like many straight male musicians, had his faults. At times, his lyrics showed disrespect towards women and LGBTQ plus community. Maybe he would have improved with more time. Judging his worth based on yearly turkey giveaways or industry conflicts isn't fair. Dolph proved he saw people beyond just their deeds or mistakes by caring for his family, helping his community, and being a role model for many. To remember Dolph's legacy, the city of Memphis decided to honor him by renaming a street after him. They named it Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Avenue. This street is located where Dolph grew up, close to Castilla Heights and not far from where he passed away. In February 2022, former Senator Katrina Robinson and Representative Tory C. Harris introduced a bill to honor Dolph's memory. The bill designated November 17th as the Adolph Thornton Day of Service, the day Dolph died. It highlighted Dolph's charitable work and his dedication to making people's lives better. The main goal of this day is to celebrate Dolph's music and his commitment to helping the community and to encourage people in Tennessee to support each other. By now, you probably get where I'm going with this. People were angry and frustrated. He is such a big loss that it is almost impossible for people from his hood or paper root empire not to seek revenge. And it didn't take too long for someone to be killed. Not long after being considered a person of interest in the Young Dolph murder case, Joshua Taylor was killed. He was identified by his family as the victim of a fatal shooting in Memphis on Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. Currently, the investigation is ongoing and there's no known suspect. The Memphis Police Department hasn't provided more information about the case yet. Back in February 2022, Taylor, also known as CEO TZ, was named by the police as a person of interest in the Dolph murder case. He was also wanted for several other charges, including stealing property worth $10,000 to $60,000 and having a prohibited weapon. According to Fox 13, Taylor was discovered fatally shot inside a vehicle. It was believed that Taylor had a connection to Justin Johnson, one of the individuals accused of the murder of Dolph. Although Taylor was not charged directly in the crime and was not previously mentioned in the case, investigators were interested in determining Taylor's knowledge of Johnson's whereabouts on the day of the killing or any information he may have had regarding the murder. He was also said to be making jokes online about young Dolph's death, which got him attention because they were funny. But then things got worse. I mean, being named a person of interest and making jokes when people are pissed, he certainly made himself a target. But if you look away from regular news sources and check out different online sites, you'll find some really interesting stuff. It seems like Taylor was very connected to the Trella Mafia in Memphis. Surprisingly, some sources even say he was a leader in this gang. TZ was the head of Trella Mafia. Do y'all understand what that means? That means if anybody that's in Trula got anything to do with Young Dolph death, Justin Johnson. TZ at the end of the day, 
gives the okay. What's even more surprising is that there's a rapper named J Money Trula. He worked with Young Dolph on a song called Take My Life. J Money Trula was killed in 2016. Later, his brother D Money was also killed. Strangely, some say that a rapper named Uncle Danny, who was signed by Young Dolph, might be responsible for D Money's death. It's all pretty intriguing. Another instance that seemed like an act of revenge was the killing of Big Nusky. He was tragically shot and killed not long after he shared his location on Instagram. As the news of his unfortunate death spread, people started asking about how and why it happened. This led to guesses and investigations into possible reasons. Big Nusky's relationships and connections are the main focus of these guesses. He was known as a relative of rapper Big 30 and was signed under Moneybag Yo's label. This made him part of the collective music group. There were also rumors that he knew one of the suspects in the murder of Dolph Justin Johnson. The big question remains, could his murder be connected to seeking revenge for young Dolph's murder? Although there's no clear proof that Big Nusky was involved in young Dolph's murder, street dynamics often rely more on feelings than facts. Just being linked to a group can put you in danger. It is an unspoken street rule. If one group is harmed, another connected group might retaliate. Even though Big Nusky might not be guilty, this situation highlights the challenge of staying safe while making it in the industry. Achieving success can have consequences and holding on to past associations can lead to fatal outcomes. Some believe that to build a better future for their families, moving away from the hood and cutting ties is crucial, especially when lives are at risk. At the end of the day, these deaths and attacks may be acts of retaliation from the Paper Root Empire and Young Dolph's affiliates. We can only watch and see how the entire scene unfolds. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos related to hip-hop culture.